Hello and welcome to the video. Today we will be covering the basic, classic, hairspray chipping technique. This technique is pretty foundational in the scale modeling scene, and can be very useful for a wargamer to learn. We start with priming black. I use Vallejo airbrush primer for this step, but your own primer of choice should totally work. After our primer coat, we start working on our rust undercoat. Most hairspray chipping is designed so that it reveals a brown rust undercoat underneath the paint top coat. For this demonstration, we will be using Craft Store Acrylics just to make things a little bit more accessible. They are also quite thick and somewhat slow to dry, and these characteristics are actually pretty good for when you're painting grungy vehicles. Here I am using Burnt Sienna, Burnt Umber, and Red Ochre. I'm not really following a strict technique with the color application, I'm just having fun with the paints. I do however try to keep the brush strokes in the one direction as it makes the next step come out nicer. At this point, I have colored the entire vehicle, and I am brushing water onto the paint for the next step. While everything is still wet, I will take one of these sponges, which I got from the packaging of an Infinity miniature, and I will just attack the wet paint layer with the sponge. This evens out all the brush strokes and gives the vehicle a nice, worn texture. If you don't have this kind of packaging foam available, you can always just use your standard dishwashing sponge. Once you are happy with the sponging, leave your coat to dry for at least 30 minutes. You want this paint cured and sturdy before you proceed to the next step. Once your paint is dry, you are ready to apply the hairspray. You can also use stuff like AK chipping medium for this next step, but an airbrush is recommended if you want to use those properly. If you don't have an airbrush, you're probably gonna use hairspray straight out of the can. This stuff is pretty cheap and will last you a long time. You will want to apply this in a nice even coat so that it looks like your model is wet. If you end up creating a weird texture with it, it means you've gone too thick. It will take about 30 minutes to dry, and once it has, you'll be ready to apply the top coat. For this demonstration, I will be mixing one is the one follow blue with titanium white. Again, just Craft Star Acrylics. I will be thinning these paints with just a drop of water, because you want these paints as dry as you can get. The next technique we'll be doing is overbrushing, which is basically just dry brushing with a really loaded brush. I like to use a big makeup brush for this, it's also very good for dry brushing. Really any appropriately fine big brush will do for this step, but a makeup brush is a very good thing to have handy. If you are getting apparent brush strokes from this step, you can just go over the layer with a sponge afterwards. Once you are happy with the look, leave it to dry. Once again, make sure it is bone dry before you carry on. The next step is the actual hairspray chipping itself. The idea here is to take some water and wet certain parts of the car. The water will break apart the hairspray underneath our layer of paint, and it will make it very easy to chip. The rust layer, however, will remain sturdy and will show through. I am using a nice, stiff bristled brush for this. Occasionally, I will go in with a toothpick, but I prefer the brush most of the time. I am going to leave in a fair bit of footage for this part so that people can see clearly how I choose to approach it.
And that is pretty much the basics of the hairspray chipping technique. The steps I will be doing next are completely optional, but I think it helps to learn them if you're new. While I have the sponge out, I will be doing some basic sponge stippling on this vehicle. Here I am using just straight up black acrylic paint. And this is something I do for a lot of the things I make, especially for Gaslands. You're gonna see it a lot in my terrain in particular. This introduces a third color into the mix, so you have your blue, you have your brown, and you have your black. It also helps the paint job go into a gradient towards the wheels if you do have your wheels, which will probably be black. If you are not feeling this step, feel free to totally ignore it. And that is pretty much us for the video. This is a fundamental technique, and there's lots of ways to apply it if you search around. You can change the colors around, you can go up to three layers of chipping instead of two, you could have a metallic undercoat, or you could use different tools to achieve the actual chipping effect. Let me know what you think of the technique down in the comments, leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy the video, and I will see you next video. Until then.